If you happen to see this car randomly in a random basement, well, what are you going to call it? A notchback? A fastback? A sportback? Possibly a hatchback? Kite? Kite 5? Well, it's about time, ladies and gentlemen, that we call this car by its right name. So take your notebook, make a note for the all-new Tigor Styleback. It's going to be launched on 29th of March. Yes, that's very soon. So we got to quickly make our way to what the car is. There's no time to be lost. But first, some good news. We at Powerdrift are giving away a OnePlus 3T mobile phone on 25th of March. Well, that's wrong. We're giving away two OnePlus 3T mobile phones. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below. It's no complications, no rocket science. Two lucky winners will win OnePlus 3T. Lock kiya jai. OnePlus 3T. In other good news, I'm going to tell you all the good and the bad things about the Tata Tigor. I'm a car man. This is Power Drift. So let's put all the numbers on the paper and you can thank me later. The Tigor is based on Tata Tiago and as such is a smaller car than the sub 4 meter compact sedans of India. But what's interesting to note is that the wheelbase is more than the Suzuki Swift Desire, Honda Maze or Hyundai Accent. The boot is operated by two pneumatic struts, no gooseneck hinges, giving you more space on the inside as it boasts of 419 litres. Both petrol and diesel have a fuel tank capacity of 35 litres. However, the petrol variant comes with 15-inch alloy wheels, while the diesel gets smaller 14-inch alloy wheels. Now, on the inside, the Tigor is a comfortable city car. Now, the stress being on city car, even the engine options suggest the same 1.2 litre three cylinder Revitron engine. There's the one litre diesel engine. And uh, yes, both the petrol and the diesel variants are a good 50 kilos heavier than the Tiago. So you might expect performance issues. But here's the deal for me right now today here at my first impressions with the Tigor. <laughs> The features uh, that the Tiago doesn't get but this car gets, well, it's the touchscreen display out here. It's a small one but it's a cute one. It also integrates a rear parking camera, SD card slot, voice recognition. The screen here is adept at uh, image as well as video playback. Now all the new crop of cars, uh, they, have, they have been getting great sound systems, this is no exception. Four speakers, four tweeters, and some of my favorite English Hindi songs are really sounding really good out here. Bumper to bumper traffic like this, the clutch action is easy, not being a problem. The gear shifts are really light, I'm loving them. The gear shift lever itself uh, is uh, quite ergonomically placed. There is no center armrest here at the front, but then there is a center armrest at the back seat. I'll be stepping into the back seat in a short while. Now, you get a lot of cubby holes. I'm not sure if you can call every, every space out here as cubby hole, but then there's 22 of them is what Tata says. I literally want to count them, but I'll do that when I do a comprehensive review of this car. They're sprinkled all across the cabin, so no problems. There's a 12-volt charging uh, socket here at the front. There's one at the back too. Now, what I'm not a big fan of is this electric boot release button just below the touch screen. Not a big fan of that as you then have to keep the car in ignition mode to release the boot. But what you can also do is long press a button on the key to operate the boot, which is nice. So now the dash, it looks good, the knobs have a good feel to them. I don't expect soft touch points in a car uh, of this segment uh, and so really no complaints there. But on bad rough roads, although the ride quality is great, we have experienced uh, the dash in this diesel car to be quite rattly. Especially right above the touchscreen display, if I hit this part, I can hear them rattles even by just hitting the dash with my hand. So uh, on bad roads, they're certainly there. All right, away from the traffic jam, we finally get to stretch the legs on this diesel car. And that also means we finally get to brake. The braking on this car is uh, quite adequate, quite good. In fact, uh, I'm surprised that the car feels light on its toes when you're braking it because it's quite a heavy car. Now, a few things again. A tachometer doesn't have a red line. The petrol could drive up to 6,500 RPM. Diesel red line, I'm about to test now. 
4,800. Uh, again, uh, the needle doesn't turn red. No, no red line to the tachometer in either of the cars. What can be a bummer for a few people is the fact that the Tigo doesn't get an AMT transmission. Why? Well, uh, it's of course eventually going to get an AMT transmission. They did the same with Tiago. When they launched it, they did not have an AMT going for it. But now they do. And if you were one of those who were waiting to buy the Tigor with an AMT transmission, well, you're going to have to wait. In the back seat of the Tigor style bag, now this coupe like line out here, it doesn't interfere with your headroom. That's a great thing. Tata has always known how to create or excavate space on the inside of a car, and uh, this car is a testimony to that again. The comfort out here is also pretty good. Seats, by the way, at the front and at the back are, are okay. The front seats were really comfortable. I don't see a problem uh, even on long journeys out here at the back. And then you have a center armrest with uh, cup holders. Tata, in fact, calls this a sofa. Uh, with which stretches from one door to the other door. Now, uh, the right quality, one word for that would be stupendous. That's another thing which is a strength for Tata Motors. Any sort of irregularities on the road are ironed out by the sort of suspension that you have. Big speed breakers, well, you have huge ground clearance, 170 mm, so Tata's got you covered there too. Here's a tongue twister. Uh, the rear runs a semi-independent twist beam dual path struts, and the front, of course, is McPherson struts with coil springs. Back in the days, Tata Motors pioneered or invented the compact sedan segment through ECS. And today, they are inventing or pioneering another segment. And as such, this car then wouldn't compete against the Amaze, the Desires or the Accents. It would rather also sit below the Zest, their own Zest. The petrol variant is possibly going to cost you about 4 lakh rupees starting. And the diesel variant would start at about 4.75 lakh rupees. Of course, there would be many more who would want a piece of this pie. The Chevy Beat Essentia is already up on its toes, so do expect a lot more cars coming up in this segment going forward. But will Tata Motors be able to write a success story with this one? It all depends on the pricing that we shall see on 29th of March. I, for one, am certainly loving the new crop of cars coming from the stables of Tata Motors, and I'm definitely excited about the forthcoming cars like the Nexon. And who isn't excited about the race move? Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do remember to subscribe to our channel, type in below your comments, let us know what you thought of the car, and remember OnePlus 3T.